about this all the time. They'll get into this position and they'll want to turn the upper body. And they spend all their time trying to turn the upper body when really all I need to do is turn the lower body. If I turn his lower body, look at his upper body turned. He's already on his back. And I did nothing to his upper body. It just happened. When I over rotated the hips, he turned all the way. You got the inside Turk, step through Turk going. And if I just, if I pull that away from him, it doesn't turn the hips. What I want to do is I drive with my free leg, keep my heel in the air. See that, that put his, that put him to belly up. But I want to go further than that. So I swing this leg over the other leg. And when I do that, it over rotates him and the shoulder and his chest is going down. Right here, I'm in near fall position. I haven't pinned him yet. I'm in near fall position. <laughs> None of that required upper body strength or upper body effort so far. It was all just legs turning him with your legs. Now in practice, what we do, the way we train our guys to turn with their legs here, is we have them start with one guy on his side, belly down, other guy with a step through Turk, okay? And we start with just hands on the mat because I don't want them to use their hands. And the bottom guy struggles and tries not to get turned, and the top guy turns him just like that. By just rotating my hips and bringing that leg across, I turned him without hands. You know, look, ma, no hands. So I got him turned. That's the drill to learn how to turn a guy with just your legs. Don't do that in a real match, though. <laughs> okay? And I'll tell you why. Just like on a near leg Turk, if I turn him without grabbing his head, all he has to do is switch into me. Okay? And here's what that'll look like. In a real match, if I don't grab his head and I turn his lower body, he just switches into me and he's up on top. Okay? And you don't want to be there. I don't want him on top. I want to be on top. Okay? So the drill on turning somebody is learn to turn with your legs first, turn with the upper body second. And the drill there is don't use hands to get started. I, I want to emphasize that a little bit more because there's a tendency for most people to get anxious and want to get that pin and they'll crank the upper body and lose the legs. Once you lose the legs, he's going back to belly down because you don't really have anything on him with the upper body holds. You don't have a, you don't have a bar, you don't have a half, you don't really have anything. You just have his head held and so he isn't going. So it's important to turn the legs first and keep that secure if you want to keep him on his back. Okay? Let's look at how to seal the deal now. Let's look at how, how to really pin the guy. Up until now, you're able to turn him. Now let's look at how to pin him, okay? Um, you got your partner on his side. You got your inside Turk going. Man, again, I do this hand on the mat. I don't want to grab his head and pull and pull using bicep power or shoulder power. It's going to wear out. I'm going to use the mat for friction. He can't turn into me. And I actually will want to go across that arm. See how I want to be on the other side of that arm? Pull him down and start to pull, okay? Pull him down and all the weight's on that. Also note, just like a near leg Turk, if I put my chest on his back and try driving or pulling, he has no place to go. I have to have room for him to come underneath me. So I'm going to drive, I'm going to let those hips float over, turn him with the legs first, see where the upper body went? It turned also, because it's going to do that. Hand is under his head, and I want the arm trapped. Okay? Now a lot of kids, and I see this all the time when I watch high school matches, guys will get here and they'll put a half Nelson on a guy. Nothing wrong with a half Nelson. Half Nelson's a great thing. But when I go to turn him, there's really no pressure. Okay? Actually, if I'm going to half, I'm going to have to let go of the perk and dig a deep half. And that would work. That's not bad. But we're not going into that today. I would rather have the arm trapped. And I'm going to show you how to trap that arm sometimes when you don't get it. Because if you trap the arm, that's where your real pressure is going to come from. Turk going hip to hip, hand on the mat, drive, rotate the hips, and the upper body starts to turn. Now we're ready to seal the deal. Hand on the mat. Everything's trapped. And I'll actually sometimes push that shoulder down right there. The referee, this is cool for referees. They can see that really easy that he's going to get pinned. And right here I tighten it up. There is, it isn't tight with my legs at all anymore. But boy, is it tight with the upper body. You can actually take the wind right out of your opponent right here. Yeah. Be careful, you could break his ribs actually. Okay, but I'm taking his body and his body's twisting like an S right there and pressure down with my chest on his arm. He's pinned and can't move, literally. 
Right? I just have done. I have to actually let him breathe for a second here because it does take the wind right out of him. Okay? That just walks around. I'll actually hold the mat right there. It takes almost no strength on my part and so I can endure forever here. But if I'm pulling with my bicep, I'm going to run out of power after a while. The friction of the mat, the weight of my hand, so I'm using gravity and friction to hold him in that position. Okay? On the real flexible guys, because once in a while you'll get a guy real flexible. Uh, I used to do this where I'd reach back and grab his foot. Referees didn't like that because it kind of twisted, knee locked him. So instead, I'll reach around and I'll catch him above the knee and I'll come up here and I'll cradle that. And this is extremely tight. He isn't going anywhere. And you can just kind of settle it in until you got the, got the pin, okay? So let me show that real quick. From start to finish, in terms of the turn, pull in the head and the pin, and then we're gonna come back with a plethora of positions that you can get that from. Because it's kind of fun. This is the inside Turk. Once you learn this, you're going to be wanting to look for it all the time. Okay? I've got my step through Turk. He's belly down. He's belly down. I'm going to go under his hip face. I'm going to first thing turn with the leg. So heel comes in the air, drive with the free leg. That's the foot right here that I'm going to drive with. I drive and then I swing that leg along the midline of his back to turn his upper body. I'm staying high so he has room to move underneath me. And right here, I'll push that shoulder down and I'll tighten it up. And right here, it is real tight. He can't turn away uh, to his left and he can't turn to his right. <laughs> and if he's real flexible, I'll come back here and I'll cradle it up. Okay? Once in a while, you can even step off of that and go to perpendicular to him. Arms between his legs and everything is chest down. This is really tight. He's not getting off his back. He can't go away from me and he can't go to me. And he's just struggling right there. You're going to get the pin. The neatest thing about this is having that arm trapped on his chest. Because the only way you can get off your back is to get an arm through. You can't get off your back without getting an arm through. And if I can trap that arm to his chest, he's not getting an arm through, okay? So it's extremely, extremely tight.